All right, hey, welcome back. Hi. Let's move on to our next distribution, the Poisson distribution. Uh, but actually, before we do that, let's take a couple minutes just to review. Uh, we did the binomial distribution, and then we spent some time focusing on the mean and standard deviation of the binomial. So let's just get back and review the computational part of the binomial. Uh, so from the first day survey, I asked you guys to pick a random number from 1 to 100. 41% uh, of you picked an even number. So let's use that as our baseline percentage there. And let's say my next class, when I teach stats again, uh, probably be just a single class, not a learning community. So it'll probably have a cap of 32. Uh, so let's work out these probabilities. Uh, in a group of 32 people, uh, what's the probability that exactly 10 will pick an even number? You know, 41 percent is the real rate. Uh, 16 or less, and more than 20. So go ahead and pause the video right now. Go ahead and pull up Stat Disk, and see if you can compute those three probabilities, and then we'll come back and do them together. Uh, so go ahead and hit pause right now and work those out. Okay, so welcome back. Uh, let's see how you did. Uh, so the first uh, question there is just saying exactly 10. So we want the probability um, of 10, exactly. We've got 32 trials. We've got a 41% chance of success. So when we pull up stat disk, we will go to the uh, probability distributions under analysis, and we'll go to binomial. And we'll say that we're going to do this 32 trials. And uh, I already forgot, was it 40, 41? 41, 41%. 41 uh, so 41 is the probability of success. And I was asking for the probability of getting 16. Boy, my memory's bad. Was it 16? No, it was 10. Good grief. Okay, uh, let's do the probability of 10. and evaluate that and we say if x is 10 uh, then the probability of x is about 7 8 percent so 0 0.0787 rounded to three sig figs um, keep in mind the stat disk also gives us the probability not just of 10 but also of 10 or fewer and then of 10 or more. But right now we just want the probability of 10. Okay, for the second question, uh, the probability of 16 or less. So that's the probability of 16 or less than 16, right? So that's 15 or 14, 14 or 13, all the way down to 2, 1, 0. We want the probability of 16 or less. Uh, so let's go back to stat disk and put 16 in for the x value because one of the things this does over here is 16 or fewer. So let's evaluate. You see if the if x is 16, then the probability of getting exactly 16 is this, which we don't care about. Uh, the probability of getting 16 or fewer, 16 or less, is 0.887 to three sig figs. Uh, so 0 0.8 eight seven and the last one is more than 20. Uh, keep in mind more than 20 does not include 20 itself right we need to be more than 20 so this actually means 21 or 22 or 23 or all the way up to 32 i guess is the highest we could be 31 comma 32. so this means we have to be a little bit careful when we do stat disk because stat disk always includes the first number uh, so we can't put 20 in here because it'll tell us 20 or more uh, even though the phrasing is more than 20 we're gonna have to put 21 in so we get 21 22 we get 21 or more that is what we want so go back to stat disk and if you put in 21 and evaluate this last frame over here now says well, what's the probability of 21 or greater than 21, and that's 0 0.00427. Uh, so with those three sig figs, ignore the first two zeros, 0 0.00427.
Okay, uh, fair enough. I just want to do a little review of the binomial. Uh, so now let's talk about the Poisson distribution. So the Poisson distribution has uh, different requirements than the binomial. Uh, but it turns out there's four of them, just like there were for the binomial. Uh, the big one for the Poisson uh, is that you've got a random variable x, and this time it stands for the number of occurrences of an event over some interval. And the way that I often tell students to remember this is you need a per. And per starts with P, and so does Poisson, so you can say Poisson is the per distribution. So you need something like saying a uh, number of occurrences of event over some interval. So like you could say something like I get 17 texts per hour. I know nobody loves me. Only 17 texts an hour. Um, but that's a per, right? That's a, that's a number of occurrences of an event over an interval. The interval here is hours. Uh, so 17 texts per hour. Um, usually the interval that we're talking about is a time interval. Uh, so usually yeah. it's time. Doesn't have to be. So per hour, per day, per minute, per second. Those are pretty typical. You could have an average of 2.6 weeds per square foot in my garden. So there's a, a per that is an area rather than a time. Uh, but those are the sorts of things that we are looking at when we're talking about a Poisson distribution. Uh, so that's the main big requirement. The other three are kind of more housekeeping. These occurrences have to be random. So it can't be that you're getting 17 texts per hour because you're getting one every 2.6 minutes on the clock, right? That's not random. Um, and the occurrences must be independent of each other, just like they are for binomials. So what happens with one can't affect another one. And uniformly distributed, evenly distributed, maybe that kind of seems to contradict random. Uh, but what they're saying there is we don't want random like clusters or clumps. So we don't want the rate to go up at the beginning of the hour, maybe drop off at the end of the hour or something. It just needs to kind of be evenly random throughout the whole interval. Uh, so let's take a look at one example, one or two examples here. And then in the next video, we'll look at one that's very similar to a homework problem. Okay, so uh, years ago, I had a student that worked for a, a research professor down in California, but he worked up here and he kept track of whale migrations. So he'd look at the whale sightings and he'd say uh, the typical average sighting of the particular kind of whale they was looking for uh, was 6.2 per week. And then the question was, so a certain week, uh, they ended up seeing 12. And the question is, is that what's the chance of that? I mean, is that an indication that the migration has started or is that just a kind of a randomly high week? So if the average is 6.2 per week, what's the probability of getting 12. And then maybe just for practice, let's also talk about the probability of, of 12 or more. Okay, uh, so remember this 6.2 per week and then 12 and 12 per more. So let's go back to stat disk. Um, and this time under probability distributions, uh, we're not heading for the binomial anymore. We're heading for the Poisson. Uh, so click Poisson. And it just asks you for the mean or the average. Uh, so our average is 6.2 and click evaluate. And it doesn't really give you the option to say 12. It just gives you the whole list here. It says here's the probability of zero. Here's the probability of one. So we need to scroll down a little bit. And say right there, um, X is what we're looking for, by the way, don't get uh, don't get confused by the column or the row labels over here. X is the number of successes. So if we're looking for 12 sightings, uh, the probability of getting 12 is 0 0.0137. So let me jot that in. 
seven. And let's also get 12 or more. Um, there's 12 or greater, again, in that last column. So let's see, 12 or greater is 0 0.0249. So that's going to round up the nine. So it's 0 0.0250 zero to three sig figs. So point zero, there's my non-sig fig, and then here's two, five, zero. There's my three sig figs. Uh, okay, so that's just a basic illustration of the Poisson distribution. Uh, the book, some of the homework problems walk you through a specific process using the Poisson distribution, and we'll look at an example of that in the next video.